And uh, we're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Dr. Tui Meba Wandu joins us this morning. Happy holiday, Dr. Tui. Easter. Easter. <laughs> well, uh, uh, it's day. also you a holiday. Have... Happy Easter and a happy holiday. <laughs> yes, again, the holiday. I've just been speaking about holiday. Please, smile. Okay, it's, it's fine. It's a holiday. Uh? It's a public holiday. You should know that. Well, it doesn't look like a public holiday because you're on air with me, but we'll just leave it at that. Let's get straight to the crux of the matter. Now, uh, this conversation has dominated the space for about last week. And now the Medical and Dental Consultants Association of Nigeria uh, have said that they are rejecting the bill seeking to make it mandatory for fresh medical graduates to provide services to Nigeria for up until five years before receiving full registration and license to practice. The association in a statement said that the bill being proposed by the House of Representatives was discriminatory and not in the interest of the people. He said that while the passion and concern for the health of Nigerians uh, was demonstrated by Abiodu uh, Ganiu Johnson by proposing the bill as penancia for you know the phys physician's brain drain for all of the doctors that are moving away from Nigeria is commendable. The bill, however, is misdirected, ill-informed, and poorly uh, thought out. The association also said that the bill had a possible effect of doing the exact opposite of aggravating the exodus, which has been, I mean, the issue where doctors are moving away, medical practitioners, and what have you, and they have been having conversations with you know the executive arm of government to mitigate all of that. So this bill might just go ahead. It has gone through the second reading. Dr. Tui Meba Wandu, thank you so much. He's a health expert. He joins us this morning from uh, in Lagos via Zoom. Uh, Dr. Tui, once again, thank you. Thank you for having me. I mean, before we get to you know the other parts of this bill and looking at all the crocs and conversation that have uh, you know been up following this particular bill that has made it to the second reading, I'd like to share your initial reaction when you read and saw this. Um, it, 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 the first thing was actually I was aghast. I was actually, you know, concerned. Concerned um, at the level of the thinking that dominates our legislation. And how can somebody just wake up without doing proper dissection and understanding of issue at hand, and then look at a shortcut, a, a shortcut that will actually have a direct opposite of what he intends to do? What is the issue here? Um, you observe that there is. Um, exodus of medical doctors and uh, health workers out of Nigeria. And you, in your own wisdom, you think that the best thing for this is to lock the door so that they don't go away. And you display a lot of ignorance about the registration process of the, of the new doctors. And then um, you thought that once you lock them inside, then they'll be compelled uh, to work. Uh, number one, it shows that the man actually is not, is, shouldn't be there, shouldn't be um, a House of Rep member. Here are the reasons. Um, the shortage of health practitioners, including doctors, um, is pan Africa. It's actually global, but Africa is worse. Um, in Africa, the whole of Africa, we have about 300,000 doctors and about uh, 1.2 uh, million nurses. Let's put it that way. And then um, we're having a shortage by 2030, about 6.1 million doctors. That's the subject we're looking at. So um, it's a big issue. Um, if you look at if you compare it to other parts of the world, um, you look at uh, 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 Pacific region, Japan, China, Malaysia, and those ones. They have as much as uh, 4.2 million doctors and 7.6 million nurses. Massive number in a way. It was that's why they are still moving away and don't even have enough in a way. Now, secondly, you see that the challenge in Nigeria is production of even doctors because as it is now. Where we ought to be put, we need about 12,000 doctors every year for the next 30 years, for instance. But we're producing barely 3,000. The 3,000 will have to go to the different um, areas of work. Out of this, this number of 3,000 you're producing, you, they have been faced with strike, they have been faced with challenges of how to actually train properly. Then, the key issue of um, university capacity to train them is there. Even when they finish training, they want to enter into housemanship, they want to enter into residency. There are no spaces. There's a lot of them, even the few ones that are remaining, don't even have jobs to take up. 
When they don't have job, they will sit down, look for money, the family will raise money. I said, hey, please, instead of you staying here, after spending a lot of money, after spending many years, please do exam, do abroad. This is one of the key factors driving the exodus of those young doctors out of the country. No placement, no job. And sometimes when they have to do the job, they have to do a job that, that pays a tiny amount of money, you know, that is not commensurate with all the, all, the, all the activities, all the stress they put into the service. Listen, I have younger ones studying medicine. I have two that are like my children studying medicine. In Nigeria, I know what they're going through. So now, and I also have those ones that are, are finished and are looking for placements. They cannot be trained. So why, where do you want them to stay? Well, we want them to be looking where they cannot get, and where there's some other people are looking for them. So it's, it's, it's quite concerning that people that are supposed to put proper thinking into the health system and how to drive health services are looking at how to lock people inside. It's just like saying that um, you're having insecurity in this country, that, okay, the best thing you want to do is that when you don't have that, it's better to lock yourself inside the place. You. And then they should, they should, they should forget that talent seeks where it is appreciated. When you have a talent, you have to aggress to where you can be appreciated where you can be compensated, where you can be loved. And um, um, sequentially, strikes, lack of work, poor co uh, condition, poor clinical governor, all this is already besetting health system. And the man is not thinking about that. And the only reason, this is the concerning part of it, the only reason he gave that, that you, doctors should stay for five years before college legislation is that they subsidize um, training of doctors, please, I want the man to substantiate it. Because I have people that are, that are trained as doctors. I want to see where the subsidy came from. Secondly, I guess lawyers were subsidized. Politicians were subsidized. We're still subsidizing politicians. A lot of all the people that the engineers are subsidized. A, accountants are subsidized because they train the same. If they train the same university, that means it didn't apply to them. Then how are you collecting that subsidy money from them? Doctor will do one year as much for first rate. That enough is not enough for you to pay because you are paying them part of some. That is not enough to cancel your subsidies. What will happen is that if anybody choose to push this bar ahead, doctor, they won't, they won't mind. And less people will go in to study medicine. People will not pick medicine again. That will worsen the situation. Secondly, when they when those one that finishes, they will seek appointment elsewhere apart from uh, core health sectors. They look for appointment elsewhere. They can go and join join consulting firm. They can even join any other financial institution. Doctors are very adaptive. They can do a lot of things. They can even join entertainment. They will just leave the work and then <laughs> it will worsen what you're trying to get, get what you're trying to solve. <laughs> it's a very poor thinking and it's very concerning. You know, so I mean you you got me there when you said that doctors are very flexible, they can join it. Are Nigerians not flexible? Can we not just be, you know, whatever it is that you want us to be at a certain time? Uh, that's on the light to know. But i like us to look at, you know, the reason why this bill became, uh, has gone through the second reading, and that's why it's, you know, facing a lot of criticism across board, is that it's supposed to be like a solution for physicians' brain drain. The fact that medical practitioners and doctors are leaving is supposed to be a solution to corbing it. What are your thoughts? Do you think that... Uh, <laughs> let's look at why this became a conversation that we're having now. It's supposed to reduce brain drain. Do you think that this will help reduce it, brain drain? It uh, reduce, what it what exactly should be done then reduce to reduce brain. the brain drain? It will reduce brain drain. You know, um, first and foremost, we need to do a proper thinking. How many doctors do we need in this nation? Because if you don't have sufficient doctors, your capacity, or let me just use the word health workers, <clears throat> your capacity um, to deliver even your basic health care services will be compromised, you understand? Immunization will be challenged, maternal death will be challenged, treating for chronic illnesses and treating them will be challenged. We saw recently how a prominent Nigerian senator ended up uh, uh, in a mess and ended up messing up the country in the United Kingdom about kidney trans uh, transplantation. I have all these things because Nigeria is experiencing a lot of chronic illnesses now. How do you deal with them if you don't have doctors? Now, the, the key question is that uh, how do you deal with brain drain? You see, there are key issues. There's not the, the pull factor, the push factor. We've spoke, spoken about this severally. Now, here in Nigeria, we have to tick up security. The basic thing is that you have to increase doctor's production. You know, how do you 
increase doctor's production, encourage people to pick science, you know, incentivize the study of science, incentivize the training um, of doctors, you know, um, in the sense that um, can you give scholarship, can you give uh, grants, can you even you know, do some institutional direction to say, okay, um, PTF or whatever you are, structure funds to people that are studying health care services, uh, health care, you know, courses, a so, 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 so number of university. Can you do that? Can you support the training of the, of the doctor, equip the hospitals, uh, hire more consultants, render them appropriately, you know, and then um, expose them to that? Because before, uh, the doctor um, at the third year of postgraduate training, the second year of postgraduate training actually goes abroad um, to, for exposure, for further exposure. But all these things were cancelled during Buhari Diagbo Reggie. You just woke up one day and cancelled all those things, you know, and that. And, and that, of course, will impact, you know, on the center for people to, to, to practice medicine. What you should also be doing is that create an environment in this nation that will ensure that there will be reverse brain drain, what we call brain gain. Uh, can people come and set up uh, centers here and run health facilities uh, in an environment that's, that's, that, 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 that is developed of kidnapping, lack of infrastructure, um, extortion, you know, government um, uh, neglect. Because what even people that are actually um, getting involved in healthcare in this country, you see a lot of um, negative reports from government, from institutions, from monitoring, from registry. A lot of problems, and they have to say, listen, enough and no further. I have to exit. So we need that kind of thing. Encourage return, increase training. Uh, incentivize, you know, um, uh, uh, health uh, workers training, equip the center, equip the hospital, and right. ensure that you have good clinical Do Dr. Tui, and remuneration. Well, as we course this conversation down, I'd like to ask you if you think that this bill would see the light of day. It's scaled through the second reading. That's a lot of progress. Do you think... <laughs> <laughs> you and I have to laugh at this at this point. But again, I ask you, do you see this? <laughs> I, I think the folly should be obvious to either the proponents and those supporting the bill. It, it, the folly should be obvious to them that they back up. Because again, let's face it, there's still going to be public hearing. You cannot just um, ram a bill down and, you know, and push people into this kind of confusion. There's still going to be public hearing because the key stakeholder, it won't work. You know, because the key stakeholder in these things are too many. They have to be involved. The Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria has a structured process of giving you um, permanent registration. And it's a law. <laughs> you, you cannot then go and cancel a law that will interfere with that law or even interfere with your own freedom. Okay? I'm not, I've not made a doctor to be punished by the state. That, that's, that's the punishment. It's a fall. It's, it's what happened. And then there's so many interests. You know, you are not. The people that train the doctors, the medical consultants, the Association of Nigeria, the, even the, the NMA, everybody needs to be involved in this, even the labor. Because once a doctor does his training, a doctor then has right to do housewarship and get a permanent registration. That is the stream. How do you want to bind them? To, if you bind them, they'll go and get another worker. They are always going to do the work in the hospital. They'll go and work elsewhere. They have talents, you know, they work elsewhere. You know, at the end of the day, I, I, I can imagine. You know, a lot of doctors now join the entertainment, a lot of doctors <laughs> joining consultancy, after, which a lot of them are already doing, okay? Or even getting involved in, you know, in, in some doing crash courses and other like courses and join those courses. They will oh. perform well. It's not a big deal, okay? Oh. Okay. So then, how do you not get that? You have trained somebody for seven years. Somebody has been trained for seven years. You want to go and hold him down for five years. And in that, indeed, most of them spend up to ten years. Well, well. And then you want to add five years to them, five years. For what now? What is that expectancy <laughs> in Nigeria? So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a criminal thing, honestly. It's, uh, it's so disgraceful. Dr. T, you are, so I, disgraceful. I can feel, I can feel your like pause that. this morning. I can feel your pause. I can feel your spirit. But it can only get better. Thank you so much for making our time to be with us on uh, you know, Easter Monday, a public holiday. Yes, this. Uh, we do appreciate you. Yes. Have a fantastic day. Well, that's the size of our conversation. We've been speaking with an expert, a health expert right here in Lagos, Dr. Tui Mebawandu. He shared his thoughts as 
to the bill and what he thinks he thinks is uh, very criminal of the government to you know think about it or whoever is you know proposing this bill is not a solution to what you're thinking about there are other issues that should be paid attention to and we'll, we'll leave it at this I'm, I'm hoping that it, this conversation won't end until we see the end of it but that's the size of our conversation on the breakfast we thank you so much for being part of the show you can follow us on facebook Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. We'll join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. In the meantime, have a fantastic holiday and a happy Easter Monday. My name is Messi Bopo.